Hello everybody and welcome back to the second shelf and to the last Books Weekly of the year 2016. I didn't read that many books the week before Christmas, as you might have noticed because I didn't put up a Books Weekly last Sunday, but I have three last books of the year that I want to show you and talk to you about. And the first book I want to talk to you about is a non-fiction book that I started before Christmas and finished right after, and that is Helen Garner's This House of Grief, published in 2014. Helen Garner is an Australian author, contemporary author, whom I really like, uh, non-fiction and fiction work, and I was really interested in her account of a real-life murder trial, because that's what the book is. For those of you who live in Australia, you might remember the case on Father's Day 2005, Robert Ferguson, a divorced father of three young sons, drives with the sons in the car off a dam into the water and the children drown. He can save himself, but the children are dead. He's then accused of deliberately driving into the water, accused of murder, although he always maintains that it was an accident, that he had a, a coughing fit and fell unconscious behind the wheel and the car drove off the dam into the water by accident. So the book recounts the trial, the witness statements, the questions asked by the two lawyers, the reactions of the jury, the, the reactions of the accused, how he looks like, and that, that is really very interesting if, if you are at all interested in that kind of thing. The only thing that I missed in the book, and, and therefore I only, only quote-unquote, gave it three stars on Goodreads, um, was a certain depth or reflection. I, I, I would have expected that Helen Garner would reflect on her reactions to the trial about the stuff like the presumption of innocence and how you react to witness statements, whether you believe them, whether you believe the accused. And I, I thought that was a little shallow. But still, like I said, if you are interested in murder trials, if you are interested in real crime, then Helen Garner's This House of Grief is certainly worth your while. The next book I read last week was a novel, Americana, by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. The book was published in 2013 and is the third and so far last of her three novels. I read this book for a Goodreads book club run by Max over at Well Done Books because he invited us to read Adichie with him, so we read all three novels in the last three months. Americana follows two main characters, Ifemelu and Obinzi. Ifemelu is a young woman who fell, uh, fell in love with Obinzi in Nigeria, where they were both born, and they both leave Nigeria to go to the United States. Ifemelu leaves first, and so part of the book is set in the United States, where Ifemelu lives for a while. Obinzi then ends up in England because he can't go to the United States after 9-11. He doesn't get a visa. So the part of the book is his adventures in the UK as an illegal immigrant. And they both return later to Nigeria. So the book spans quite some years from their childhood into their life as immigrants and then back to Nigeria. Ifemelu's part is much bigger in the book and there, there are beautiful scenes in there um, when she goes to a hair salon to have her hairs braided and hair plays an important role in the book, at least um, at the parts of the book that uh, are from Ifemelu's point of view. She studies in the United States, she starts a blog about race and racism, um, parts of the blog entries are also included in the book, and I thought this was the most interesting topic of the book, apart from the life of immigrants, legal and illegal. Um, but the, the most interesting part was Ifemelu's 
take on race in the United States because as a black woman from Nigeria, she didn't grow up identifying as black. She started identifying as black when she uh, lived in the United States. And the difference between how black people identify themselves and identify race and uh, deal with race when they are born in the United States in opposition with people who come from, from Africa, like Efemelo, that is really, really very interesting. And also Obinzi's part, although he's a little bland in the beginning, but his life as an illegal immigrant in the UK is, is really heartbreaking. So I, I enjoyed the reading and Adichie is a fantastic writer. The writing is really good, I, I thought. But when I finished the book, I wondered why it didn't, I don't know, it didn't grab me as I thought it would. And, and when, when thinking about it and reflecting upon it, I thought that for me, Americana was a fantastic book as a topical read for, for certain, if you're interested in certain topics, like I said, immigration and race and the difference between American, uh, the, the, the American frame work of, of race uh, and, and how that is looked upon if you come from, from Nigeria. But it didn't quite come together for me as a novel. I thought the topic and the theme sort of crushed the story. So I, I, I think, in, in my opinion, because a lot of people love the book, and I can certainly understand that, but I didn't think it was a very good novel, if you know what I mean. And maybe it would have been better if it had been a non-fiction book or a memoir, because certainly if um uh, life in the United States is based upon the experiences of Adichie herself, because she came to live in the United States and studied there. So it, it I don't know, it, 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 I, I don't think it is her best novel. It is a good book. And I understand if you love it, but I don't think it is her best novel. And I have to say, out of all three of her novels that I've read, I think Purple Hibiscus is her best novel. But let me know what you think if you read any of the three or all three. And if you loved Americana, whether you can understand or relate to what my problems with the book as a novel were. And the last book I read this week, and also the last book, of 2016 for me is another non-fiction book and that is Jenny Diskey in Gratitude. Jenny Diskey was an English author, very prolific author, non-fiction and fiction. If you've never read her, you should certainly check out her work. She died in April of this year of lung cancer. She was diagnosed in 2014 and the book is written after the diagnosis and is a memoir about being a terminal cancer patient. But an important part of the book, I'm now halfway through, is also about Jenny Diskey's youth, coming from a broken family, had, having to quit school, trying to kill herself, ending up in a psychiatric institution for some time. And then her life yeah, has an unexpected turn when the mother of one of the boys who, are in the, uh, who, who was in the same school as Jenny invited her um, to live with her. And that person is Doris Lessing. So a big part of the book is about the relationship between Jenny Diskey and Doris Lessing. And I'm, I just read last night the parts in which Jenny Diskey explained how difficult it was for her to live in another person's house, how she felt she had to tiptoe, she didn't know how much toilet paper she was allowed to use and uh, whether she ate too much or too little, whether she was too... That's... it's really... she's... Jenny Diskey is, is extremely capable of analyzing these situations and the book is very raw, also when it deals with cancer. It is humorous, gallows humor, but in a, in a very subtle way. So 
although it might not be the most positive book to end my reading year with, I, I really so far I think it's a very good book and I will finish it today. So that's why I included it in my last three books of 2016. So this was it for my last books weekly in 2016. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you all in my next video. Bye-bye.